Most of you want to keep that up with the astounding. This patient, this poor lady, had a, what they call low tension or normal tension block home and had every ophthalmologic procedure done on this left eye, uh, lasers, and finally put a filter in to try to drain the fluid, although there was no abnormal pressure. Finally, when we are tear grander, I'm not surprised she had essentially no abnormal part on that side. She was having really symptoms on the other side. She had a continuation of the Fox Wayne physical abdominal part. Mm -hmm. The patient had obvious sight of disease and ischemic optic and not picked up by uh, conventional non-invasive technology. The patient as well had uh, ischemic visual loss and shows attenuation of the abdominal part here. Similarly, no abdominal branch you can see in there. The patient presented with the venous spaces, retinopathy syndrome, focused the nose into the abdominal part. Similarly there. This is a disease entity that is not certainly not described in the text of the ophthalmologic literature and only recently began to appreciate beating and narrowing the proximal comments there. I took this to show that sometimes we obtain seven other vertex we used to better demonstrate the proximal comment for us. This patient here with a cute cutoff had a central retinal occlusion. This patient here with attenuation never built any further ischemic optic or optic. These are all time diagnoses to make and probably leave most of us thinking that we're not going to be able to make that what we do now. And part of our endeavor was to see if they're thinking we can deal with these patients. We thought that some of these may have a treatable situation, but the possible of down the corner narrowing the site and the accessible carotid disease, we felt that it may be possible to take a superficial temporal branch and, and and ask the most of the abdominal corner to select the cases with progressive visual ones. Now with the arms to be approached extra cranial, and that's exactly what we intended to do here. By turning down a bike on the flat, the uh, superficial brain, superficial temporal can be exposed, as well as this uh, branch here, the front pillar of the abdominal artery, which is almost always there, not going into cranial, but just taking a bird, drilling out some of the bony surroundings around that artery. It can be followed back to its uh, large enough to anastomose in an end to end fashion with a microvascular uh, setup. And this is the uh, artery leading the order for the plant for the moon. Then following the plant for the moon. We were able to do four patients with this operation and had dramatic results. Thank you, Dr. Richard. Present is Secretary Clay. Chronic retinal ischemia is an uncommon indication for uh, carotid endorectomy, but it's an important one. And I uh, think tests like this are important because uh, they allow us to pick up patients sooner. The problem with these patients is that they're frequently referred to late. Once they have venous stasis, retinopathy, rubiosis, iridosis, and then notice some of your patients had, they get neovascular glaucoma. And you can revascularize them, but then you can actually make the neovascular glaucoma worse. And that's very difficult to treat uh, medically and surgically. Also, I personally have problems with patients with combined uh, pathologies like this with diabetic retinopathy. You can revascularize them. I had one patient that we converted to glaucoma to resolve the venous stasis retinopathy, but then she had a retinal hemorrhage and was immediately blind. So it's a very difficult patient uh, population to deal with. And the problem is, is that we get them too late. Um, before one accepts this uh, reflectometry as a test that's going to be useful, I think we need to know a little bit more about this. Uh, what is the variation in a single patient? In other words, what's the coefficient of variation in the test? Um, and what is its predicted value in terms of uh, uh, resolving the ischemic problem? Uh, also, what is the effect of uh, poor cardiac function as occurs in many of our patients because it's basically the circulation time and uh, is the test influenced by variation in the cardiac output? I also question uh, the, um, the correlation with changes in, in OPG, particularly ocular but this one that is described by Bill G, who's been very interested in eye pressure changes as a measurement of uh, retinal flow or orbital flow. Rather. And uh, have you made these correlations, and what are the correlations with this particular test? 
finally, I'm, I'm concerned about the manuscript, and also you briefly alluded to, uh, alluded to this, that the scheme of optic neuropathy could be reversed or might be reversed by revascularization. Uh, and I question this because when I'm standing the, the pathology or the pathophysiology is once the optic nerve is seen and it, dead, it, it's gone and you can't reverse it. And it seems to me that uh, there would be a very uh, small period of time in which you could intervene to correct this problem. Despite these reservations, I applaud these efforts uh, to diagnose and treat these patients uh, who are all too often referred to the vascular surgeon too late. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Freeman. In the OBG question, uh, we found OBG to be sensitive to the quad is the nurses, but just did not seem as the other non-invasive techniques to reflect the, I guess, isolated ophthalmic stenosis, which seemed to accord with some of these disease syndromes. Um, the aquatic outfit situation, I guess that, that sort of total reflectance of the whole body flow, I mean, if the, the cardiac output is greatly diminished, that's going to show up in the eyes as well. In that case, if both of them are along and slow going, you can look for the asymmetries and this kind of thing. If they're symmetrical and slow and long, we can tend to write this off as just being poor output. We have had the opportunity to study a few of these patients with decreased output. And as far as your question, uh, which is very appropriate regarding the uh, nerve loss and nerve death, uh, I'm not sure when a nerve dies. I think if there's, we've shown there's a number of cases where there was enough flow apparently to keep the nerve alive but not functioning, and we were able by either end or recovery or deep procedure to improve it. We've had evidence that the nerve had recovered may have been in an idling state. Uh, certainly, this work is preliminary, and I'd like to see more of this. I think evaluate carefully the visual field and uh, uh, visual acuity, but we. we uh, I think visual field is a very good evidence of optic nerve function and have shown improvement in visual field based on optic nerve flow several, on several occasions. Uh, this work is preliminary and I'm excited just to try and see what, what comes in more. Thank you. Paper number 34, the effect of who do I have on internet? Right, Dr. 